Hi everyone, after a long spell out, or that's how it seems, uh, we're back on the Steve Perriman podcast with Tom and Howard, our usual um, usual Spurs friends to help us along with, with uh, their opinions. Uh, so welcome Tom, welcome Howard. Hi, evening chaps. How are you Howard? How are you coping with uh, being over 70 like, um, like Steve Perriman is? The one thing that keeps me going is knowing you're older. Ah, uh, Howard. What a, and you, and you'll what never a be able to quote. overtake him. What a good quote. So I, I'm still waiting for our ladies to catch us up, but I suppose yeah, it's never, never quite going to happen. So I'm also told that tomorrow when this comes out, uh, remembering this is, we do this about 7.30 on Monday evening, so bear that in mind with current news of the... Um, sales and signings etc um anyway tomorrow is the chinese year of the tiger and that might get uh, a mention later on hopefully we can bring one or two more tigers in before the end of uh before 11 o'clock tonight um, because i think that um the chelsea games proved that we we lack men and um yeah i thought we were too soft and I think Rudiger sort of bullied us. He laughed. He laughed at people trying to mark him from corners, etc. And normally gets closer to the ball than than any of our ours because of pure desire. Um, I suppose as much as I don't like him, I would like him to have been in our team. So that that says something, um, and reminds me of the Alan Ball story when he tapped me on the shoulder in the players' room after a, a London derby against our big rivals. And Alan said to me, when I turned around, you don't like me, do you? I said, not really, Alan. He said, you would if you played with me. And I think that's, I think that's about right. So, yeah, uh, how do we see the... Um, so we've signed two players, chaps, is that right? Yeah, yeah, so far. Any, any opinions on those two players? Do you know anything about them? I have some Swedish friends who have told me about the Kulasevsky. Um, I know nothing about Bentang Kerr. Yeah. So um, any any opinions, Howard, for instance? No. I gather that one of them is a wing, winger. The Swedish guy is a winger. And the other one is central midfield, whether he's defensive or more attack-minded, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but clearly, we've got rid of all the other potential creators in midfield. Yeah. So we've got to believe that one of these, or or he switches it around a bit and makes uh, Hoybier the more attacking minded one, depending on the, what, are, what they are. Yeah, depending on what system he plays. Yeah. Yeah. Tom, anything for just the start off? Got to admit, I've never seen either either of them play. Um, I'm all that matters to me is if is if Conte wants them, if he's if he agrees with Pratici that they're the players to add to the team, um, for and, and that they're going to do a job in a system that he wants, then uh, then that's good enough for me. Uh, I think getting rid of you know under Bele, the Celso, Deli Ali, you know, neither of them, are, none of them are getting anywhere near the team anymore. Um, and by all accounts, you know. Conte doesn't really want them near the team, so I think it's um, it's for the best that they're off the uh, off the roster and potentially. I'm not quite sure what the wage situation is, but if that frees up, you know, um, so, yeah, another surprise later on this evening. Who knows? Um, but I've got to say, I've, I I think every every January and every transfer window, I just get more and more fed up with with the circus that surrounds it. Um, you know, the media goes into overdrive. Um, there's just so much so much in the way of rumours that get out of hand that to the extent that people get upset if a rumour that wasn't even true then doesn't come to fruition and it yeah. just becomes a huge a huge mess of like annoyance and speculation which turns into uh, just a, a complete mess in the media and on social media channels and um, yeah. I've got to say I miss Miss, miss the old days when it was a, a, a bit a bit less of a of a kind of media circus on days like this. Howard, um, 
I know this is a new era or a different era to the ones that we we've been through so far with with the mighty Spurs. Do you ever remember speculation about Ardiles, Villa, no. Crooks, Archibald? There wasn't, was there? It didn't exist. It did not. I know we we're in the the, the era of social media and all this stuff, and we're seeing games from further afield, so there's more knowledge about all these players. Of course, we were watching the World Cup 78, so we were aware of our dealers, weren't we? Yeah. But I've, I've got to tell you, and I, I've told the story many times, and me and Keith were very close on the way the team was shaping up and was being formed and what we should be looking for, et cetera, et cetera. And, and Keith... I don't think Keith knew himself he was going to sign Ricardo Villa. <laughs> so there's no surprise to me that it was a surprise to me. But with, with Ozzy, for instance, I did not hear one word of our dealers coming to us. No, no rumour, no... Mm. It was just everything was kept quiet and kept to themselves. And I have to say that I prefer that type of... Um, sure that type of platform, but, you know, perhaps it's uh, it's from years gone by. I, um, I think, Steve, li- yeah, how, go on, Tom. How, how, much, how much of an um, indication did you have about Jürgen Klinsmann in 94? Did you kind of get whispers of that beforehand, or was that as much of a surprise? Uh, Ozzy, Ozzy phoned me at home one night and said, Steve, what about uh, Jürgen Klinsmann? I said, wow, okay, um, yeah. Um, how's this come about, Ozzy? Because I've not heard anything um, so far. You've never mentioned him. He said, no, uh, Mr. Sugar just phoned me and said, uh, we can have him. Wow. Um, and I think our listeners all know that I'm never too impressed with Mr. Sugar. But on that particular one, I was over the moon with... <laughs> with what he was offering so but I think it all happened the next day and and yeah again no rumor no rumor so and that's and, that. that's and that's what happens now is it because because of all the rumor you end up getting yeah fans get annoyed about things that haven't happened that were never gonna happen and it just creates mm-hmm. negativity for no reason and yeah. um yeah it can get I just yeah the, I, I remember being in my in my kitchen when I was uh 13 years old or whatever and uh, it just came on the radio that Spurs had signed Jürgen Klinsmann out of nowhere and yeah. you just cannot imagine a signing like that happening now just out of the blue without especially especially with Spurs without weeks and weeks of haggling and negotiations but I mean it would be nice wouldn't it to just one day have a have another one just come out of the blue that no one saw coming yeah that it was just kept well I've found a positive there or you've found a positive in me about Mr Sugar how, how strange is that? That wasn't on the uh, itinerary today, was it? No, it wasn't. So um, I've uh, got great friends in both Norway and Sweden. I really like their mentality with regard to to football. And I've got two particular friends uh, in Sweden. And I've phoned them both today about Kulusevski because he's a Swedish international. Um, They're telling me that it's from Macedonian parents. Uh, Juventus picked him up, about 16, 17-year-old, from a second division club that were known or are still known as a developing club. And it's the way they do their business. They develop players and they sell them on. And it's, uh, it's a club that you'd never have heard of. I certainly haven't heard of it and could spell it. Um, but along with this lad, uh, four or five others previously from this club are now all in the national squad. Um, and this Kulusevsky is, he hasn't played that many games in the national team, but he is a sort of a starter now in the, in the 11. Um, when I said to, to particularly one of them that I think we lack men, he said, Steve, this fella holds his own. And you could say that he plays a lot with his elbows. And I said, are we talking about the same man? I, th- I thought it was a right winger. Yeah, Steve, he doesn't take shit from anyone. Trust me. So 
what can I tell from that other than he's a competitor, he works hard, he wants to improve. They say that he's, and both these Swedish people use this saying, and perhaps it's part of how they describe football, but he's got a high ceiling. It's, it's, he's got, yes, he's got some way to go, which maybe suggests he doesn't start off in our first 11, but his potential is high. So um, very humble. And I, I repeat, he works hard and he competes and he doesn't like being beaten. So when you get that in a winger, I, rem I remember when I started in the professional ranks, 4-2-4, four, four, you had wingers, left and right, who excited the crowd, whatever. They normally weren't too brave. And that's why we ended up with 4-4-2, four, four, a la Alf Ramsey. And then they were more working type. So I think he's that, uh, but has some pace as well to take players on. And, and we certainly need that. I think he favours the right-hand side, but he can play on the left as well. So um, the, other, the other lad, like you two, I've never heard of him. That doesn't, that's not a negative. Doesn't mean to say we have to hear about everyone, does it? But um, I think both these players have got previous with our decision makers. And that's something that I like. You, when you've already made a decision on them once, there's a trust there if they, if they do what they're supposed to do. And therefore you would take them on again. And um, so I think that's a, that's a positive for us. What about, when I was saying, trying to say his name there, I felt a, a little bit like Paul Merson, who, who normally struggles with names. But um, I think I got it a little bit better than, than he has lately. Uh, what about Christian Eriksen, Howard? What, what, just describe what you thought of him as a player. Well, I think in his years at Tottenham, he was, he was one of the seven that we brought all at one go. Yeah. And he was the only one that really made it, in my opinion. And that was with the bow money. There's the bell money. Yeah, yeah. So we used that money to buy seven players who weren't necessarily up to it individually or as part of the team. Yeah. But he was the one that stayed throughout. And he was clearly the play playmaker. And when we got to the Champions League final and all the good things under Mauricio Pochettino, that was, that was uh, beyond that time. And um, that was our nearest to success. Yeah. Some people he, say... He, some people say that Christian was was uh, responsible for a lot of the Deli Alley good stuff. Absolutely, that he could pick him out, he could pick his runs out, yeah. and serviced his runs. And if you're servicing Deli Alley's runs, you're also servicing Harry Kane, for instance. Yes. Yeah. So it, it it I I was actually disappointed um, when he left. Was you, Tom? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I could see it coming. The, the, I think the, the whole start of the season of the 2019 2020 season felt a bit strange anyway. It was after we obviously lost the Champions League final in the in, in the summer, and it was going to be a felt like a bit of a uh, the beginning of an end of an era anyway. And, uh, and there was all this talk that Ericsson and um, the Tongan weren't getting on or, or, or something, and uh, would have had a black eye. Um, but you could tell that his heart wasn't quite in it after, after that. But I think he was always one of yeah, he was always one of he was he was definitely the best player out of the the bail money when we you know sold Elvis and bought the Beatles or whoever they like to say it. <laughs> Although it ended up being we sold Elvis and bought McFly, um, but um, <laughs> apart from Ericsson and Lamella, of course. But uh, I think um, I think he, I, th I think he, he's one of those players who who Tottenham fans probably didn't realise what they had until he went. Uh, when, when you look at the lack of creativity in the team since he since he yeah. left um is it's quite clear how how much he did um to keep the ball ticking over to keep play moving yeah. um similar to modric um and i think going back to the chelsea game um every single time we play chelsea in this horrible little series we've had against them i think it's been just clear how much better on the ball they are than us that, that their, their players just seem much more comfortable on the ball in the way that ericsson used to be for us and, and the way they're able to kind of like knock it around and our tactics didn't help but um but i just want to see players at spurs who are who are just comfortable on the ball again and just can do the basics right and if i if these two new chaps can um if, if conte's chosen them because of their ability on the ball as well as their um 
yeah what they're able to yeah being able to handle themselves and things like that then um then that's that, that's good enough for me because i just think we've currently got players who the ball just seems to bounce off a bit and um yeah. you just want to see us start controlling the, the game in the midfield again and Eric, ericsson was certainly one who helped us do that yeah he did have a quality about him didn't he with the, the free kicks and corners and stuff like that i suppose we'll never know and why should we know actually there's there's certain things you shouldn't ever um, know from the outside and we're all outsiders however much people think i'm yeah. not i'm an outsider um but of course conte signed christian ericsson in italy didn't he but i'm not sure how their relationship was or whatever and of course this is not a hundred percent signing, is it? Because he's signed to the end of the season yeah, for Brent six months. Yeah. So of course they're having a look at each other, and and maybe maybe Conte is is or wasn't up for that, or someone close to this podcast believes that uh, Christian Eriksen didn't trust uh, Levy as such. Now again, I don't know whether that's right or wrong, but. But uh, it's got a feeling, a little bit of a feeling of a slap round that the Spurs faces for him not to have been involved with, with Spurs in some level of talking. Mm. But again, without actual knowledge, that may have happened and it was a, it was a non-starter. But, um, but yeah, where, where do you think how Deli Alley's gone wrong since the, the heights of being... Being in the first eleven for the England team. Yep. Um, I think we all pretty much feel the same way. He doesn't seem like a bad boy as such, but he's obviously done a few bits and pieces, which is normally a nineteen-year-old some money, money he's got at the time. But his football career seems to have gone backwards from that point. Yeah. And there's no. Yep. They've, they've tried playing him as a number of ten occasion. They've tried playing him behind the front two. The, the truck moves around a bit, but his whole attitude seems to be pretty negative. Yeah. I keep hearing that Potticino sort of loved him and managers since haven't loved him. Yeah. Um, you, you actually love a play. I, I use the word love, but actually the word is trust. And Potticino, Potticino was entitled to trust him with what he was delivering on the pitch, wasn't he? Yeah. And you've sort of, you've maybe suggested off the pitch he's not been quite right. But when someone is producing on the pitch, that's that's the biggest reason of all, to trust them. And could be a reason why managers since him haven't trusted him. I, I, um, I always think back to my time and I know we're all different characters and we're, I'm not definitely not putting myself in, in Deli Ali's bracket of, of scoring goals or, or creating goals a lot of the time for himself as well, not just supplied to him but Abama Yang um, who the, the, the talk about today is whether he's Barcelona or not and having just signed a long contract with, with Arsenal it quickly evaporated into rows and, and problems but and I'm not sure if I'm quite right to put these things together but I was a player that played either in short sleeves or my sleeves rolled up probably twice or three times in my career my long career at Spurs I decided maybe because it was cold or whatever reason I'm going to play with my, my sleeves rolled down Having looked at it afterwards, that suggested I was not right in my mind. And of course, I was a competitive player and needed to wear shin pads in that particular era. But certain days I said, and again, only two or three times, I said, I'm not going to wear shin pads today. Again, looking back, my mind could not have been right on the game because the sleeves or the shin pads or whatever... You're, you're not thinking football, you're thinking probably how you look. And I just get this feeling with Delhi um, lately and Obama Yang with, with all the colours in their hair and this sort of stuff. I just think that the, the focus 
is away from the performance. It's more on how they look. And okay, if I'm right, what I'm saying about myself, I might be right about those two, that they've gone wayward and it, it's being shown up by how they're trying to look. Any, any opinion on that, Tom? I just remember, I think it was probably like 2018-ish kind of time, all these um, all these huge, en- Enfield suddenly became full of all these uh, big boohoo man adverts all the big posters with yeah. Deli Ali advertising his new his new clothing range. And um I, I just remember kind of uh not not really thinking about it at the time, just that oh, good, you know, good good on him. He was and he, he was playing really well and he was giving us some amazing moments at that point. Yeah, we'd obviously had a great couple of seasons um at, at the old White Hart Lane and then at Wembley he was lighting it up against Madrid and um you know against Chelsea and just having yeah, giving us some really yeah yeah we talked about ceilings earlier his ceiling yeah. just looked like it was getting higher and higher every yes, every season yes. but, but 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 then um i just kind of think back to the who man adverts in, in in enfield being a point where it was just you just suddenly start seeing more of him away from the pitch um yeah and uh, and you know you don't you don't mind you, you don't you don't even give it a second thought if, if someone's doing well on the pitch but but like more and more over the last couple of years he's becoming more known for his what he's doing on instagram yeah. or um fortnight rather than um what he's doing on the pitch yeah. and when he gets the chances he's never really grasping them and yeah. um you know he did, he did well against liverpool recently and he's had um a couple of other moments here and there but when you compare to what he was doing with the fear the fearlessness of youth uh, for the, for his first few years at spurs he was where well, he was just phenomenal and you just it was just a matter of how far he was going to go and when he was going to leave spurs for bigger and better things you know um yeah. but yeah it's it's been a real shame to kind of see see him just not live up to that and you know wish him all the best at Everton and um it's probably I think a new start it's it's just what he needs it's probably best for yeah for everyone. Howard probably the best five million we've ever spent. Don't know about that but certainly in more, in, a much in way, modern yeah. times. Yeah. 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 I mean def- definitely at Wem- I'll, I'll always one of my main associations at Wembley will always be Del- the Delhi Alley song. It was just sang over and over again at top volume, um, and yeah. even when when the new stadium opened as well, it was one of the first songs that echoed around the mm. the bowl. You know, we've got Ali, and um, it just but you haven't we haven't heard it in a long time since. And um, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a shame. But he's 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 been he was absolutely brilliant for us for for three years, and mm. um, you know I think he will go down in in Spurs folklore. Yeah, I know we're talking again about a different era, but you mentioned it earlier on, Jurgen Klinsmann. One of the main talking points people ever had with me about Jürgen, other than his game, was, have you seen the car he drives? <laughs> Beetle, this, wasn't it? This VW Beetle that mm. was so beaten up. and um, But he was humble enough to be able to carry that off. He didn't need to show himself. He didn't need to yeah. have colour in his hair, whatever. He, he did it on the pitch. He did it on the pitch. And what more do you ask as supporters? That's, I mean, maybe he was on billboards. Who knows? Can you remember, Howard? I, I don't remember seeing him on billboards. Yeah. But but anyway, so, um, so yeah. And any of the others you were disappointed to have lost? Endombele, Michelso, I think Brian all, Hill? I think all, all five of them seem to be... Um, we're taking a chance, as I said before, by having not enough to cover in midfield if these players aren't. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I also wonder how this loan system exactly works. I've never quite understood it. Are we saying that um, Lo Celso has gone to Villarreal and if at the end of the season Villarreal aren't very impressed, they just say go home? Yeah. And he's back on our books. That's how it works. So mm-hmm. although they're going, they're going for a, 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 an allotted time for them to impress the club that they're going to. Yeah. And if they don't impress, they're coming back. That, that's how I read the situation of those players. So yeah. in a way, it's getting rid of their wages yeah. and possibly a bit more yeah. um, with regard to a loan fee. But um, yeah, I, I always thought there was more in Lacelso than what he was yeah. what he putting forward. He's always done um, it for Argentina, hasn't he? Yeah. So that so people tell me, yeah. So, so I mean, how long did it take for um, Bell to to settle into the team? And yeah. 
Yeah, I think I think Bale always sh- I think Bale always showed something though. Like he scored he scored like three or four goals in his first like five or six games for Spurs, and he had that record of always being on not being on a winning team for yeah. Yeah. for years and years. But I think he always showed that he had something very special about him. I think, and I don't know if like this the Celso is just he had a pretty good spell under Mourinho at one point where it looked like he was like really easing his way into the, into, into the first team picture. But yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the one I'm quite surprised about is, is loaning Brian Hill back to Spain. You know, you kind of think it's, it's, it's a bit damning really to, to, to start to sign him in the summer and then send him, send him back to Spain uh, in the winter when, you know, you kind of think if you can send him out on loan, why not send him to somewhere else in England to toughen him up, get him used to the league. Yeah, rather yeah. than back to where he's kind of developed his, his game anyway, which yeah, because he's always looked like he's he's got something to offer Spurs, but you also kind of think he also he also looks like he needs to acclimatise to the game in England more, and sure. we're, we're sending him back to back, back to Spain. So I just don't quite understand that personally. But. Of course, we don't ever know who is who is putting their mark on each player that joins us. Is it Steve Hitchens was the was the decision maker for for a spell? with previous managers um, for good and bad. And, and every judge gets some right and gets some wrong. But you wonder where he fits in all this as per, w- was it his decision for Gill, as, as we're talking yeah. about, that, you know, by letting him go out again, is it seen as a, as a well, let's just get him out of the, out the picture because he can't really play? Or he's going to come back a better player because that's what I saw the first time. So it's all going to be interesting. So, um, yeah, I've um, I've had an interesting couple of weeks. It felt like we were away forever, chaps, didn't it? Absolutely. Wow. It's, it felt like more than two weeks. Mm. Um, and just to let you know that I've been part of a police awareness Zoom meeting, having been... Um, caught speeding almost twice in three weeks one time I just got the fine and the three points and on to the next but the next was quickly coming and all of a sudden I was offered this this awareness meeting so I was happy to take that because nobody wants extra points on your on your license so um nice lady ran it ran the course I actually enjoyed the two and a half hours um, it flew by. I wasn't allowed to have my phone on. I wasn't allowed to have Kim coming in, sorting the computer out. If it went wrong, I, I don't know what I'd have done. I'd have ended up getting the three points, I suppose. But, um, but yeah, so um, they, they, they clock you in and then your screen goes blank until they clock the other people in. I think there was about 15 people in the meeting. And then they come back with us all on screen. And I was asked first to, okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to introduce ourselves and tell us, tell everyone where you live. So I said, Steve Perriman, and I'm from Wiltshire. And everyone else just gave their first name and where they're from. So it was like I was sort of boasting. And then later on within a question about speeds, I answered 70 to one question and everyone answered 50 or 40 or whatever. And then one clever dick said, he's probably got a bigger car than us. Uh, So uh, anyway, very close to the end, the lady said, is there any comments from anyone? And another chap said, when I tell my mates, I've been on a Zoom course with Steve Perryman, they won't believe me. And I thought that was a time that I needed to tell them all. Okay, right. I only said my full name because I was first. (laughs) I didn't quite hear the question properly as you all did when you just gave your first name. So that's my reasoning. So anyway, I think I've learned something um, that will only be sorted out by my not continuing to speed. I'm doing less miles than ever now. Uh, you can imagine not being involved in football, but I'm getting, I would have got more points on my license than I've ever got in my life. So, um, so yeah, so 
So I spoke about us being the Navy Blues Brothers uh, last podcast. Are we, are we feeling blue in the Chinese year of the tiger? Howard, you feeling okay? Feeling okay, but um, I'd, be ha- I'd be happier. I was making notes of what we're going to talk about today. And I came across this, this, the debut in 2000, 2001 of Sergei Rebrov. Ah. And I remember that very clearly because everybody raved about he was the best player in Europe and he was this, that and the other. And he came and he first, first of all failed, was it with you? Was it, uh, no, George Graham, wasn't it? George Graham. Yeah, not so with that, us. That's, no. That wasn't our fault, yeah. that one. No, <laughs> but Reb, Rebrov went nowhere under, under George Graham. And we all said, well, that's the style. That's what George, he's not a George Graham type player. Yeah. But then when, when Graham went left and Glenn came in, I expected Glenn, with all his talent, would exploit but Red Bull and never, never clicked, clicked at all. Didn't happen, no. Mm-hmm. But I, I remember his debut, um, Howard, because we played Ipswich uh, yeah. on the opening day of the season, and Rebrov hit the crossbar with an outside of the boot curler um from from the edge of the box and it was just like and i just thought oh yeah he's living up to, he's going to be amazing he's yeah. going to be amazing and then just nothing really ever happened did it and i think people were saying he was like um because some people were saying that he was like uh he was he was the one who made shevchenko what he was in that partnership yeah. he he fed mm-hmm. shevchenko he was he was the yeah. one. and then um after it became clear that i think um was this, there's some song about him being the andrew ridgely of the <laughs> Shevchenko and uh, was he partnership, was he? but uh, yeah. And what about Mido? Mido in his early, it wasn't his first game, was it? His yeah, his, game his, twice. his first game against Portsmouth. Yeah, mm-hmm. wow. Yeah, and Andy Reid made his. I think Andy Reid and uh, made his debut on that that game as well. Um, yeah, because that because that was a January that was a January where we signed Dawson, Reid, and and Mido. Was and, it? Um, yeah, he was a bit, bit, bit cult hero status. Maybe he's 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 left with and. Have I got it wrong? Did he score four goals or two goals? On his debut? Yeah. He got two. Two, okay. Two on his debut. Yeah. And he, yeah. I, was getting phone, I was getting phone calls saying this is the best centre forward we've ever seen at Tottenham. Yeah. Mm. Well. Uh, <laughs> just, just, Let's slow down a just second, give right? it a few games, <laughs> a couple of months, please. And then, yeah, not. Not good enough. And what about Soldado? So there's another one. Same same thing again. Yeah, yeah. It's almost it's it's. There's more to it than just being a good player or a bad player. I think it's yeah. you've got to fit in. You've got to. You know, Aussie still lives in Hertfordshire. Yeah, that suggested that he was ready to fit in somewhere. And in life, and in the game, and in the team. In the community, if you like, Oz is still yeah. in the community, isn't he? Being an ambassador to the club, yeah. so yeah. it's uh, it all takes on a whole new concept of of settling players in, and of course, working in Japan, I was I was very aware of that. Uh, Aussie signed Taffy Bowen for us, yeah. and um, and very quickly they fell out, and you were thousands of miles away from home with your family, move your kids into a new school and different school in a, using different language. And wow, that, that takes a bit of dealing with them. And, and fair play to Taffy. He, um, he up and left after about four months and, mm. and signed for Charlton and helped to get them promoted. So that was a very good sort of part in the ways, if, if you know what I mean. And um, I didn't quite understand why Aussie fell out with him not not in life, but in a in a football way, and uh, and for whatever reason didn't didn't trust him, and we come back to that same thing of of trust, don't we? So another day, another dollar, another podcast finished. Thank you as ever for listening. Um, I think hopefully we're all hoping that we sign somebody that's going to wet our whistle. Um, for the future uh, games of this season. Uh, we've got a game against Brighton coming up, uh, FA Cup tie, which always excites me. Hope- hopefully does you too. But thanks for listening. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Howard. Thanks for all your backup staff behind you, family and wives and all that stuff. But uh, 
great to great to see you again and let's not to be so long next time see you soon up the spurs bye bye bye, bye.